This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. Number two, Kentucky playing a late Sunday night game. A win would put the Cats at 4-0 in the season and likely the number one ranked team in the nation when the new AP poll drops later today. John Calipari trying to get win number 122 in Rupp Arena. That would tie him for Joby Hall with the all-time wins in the famous arena. Duquesne got off to an early start with a nice drive by Emil Blackman. 2-0 Duquesne. That's the only lead they had. The Cats finally got it going. Malik Monk has your three ball. Doink, doink. It's kind of good. Cats leading 11 to 6 later. Winyan Gabriel gets the rebound, pushes it up to De'Aaron Fox to Isaiah Briscoe. And then we got a Monk dunk. Malik Monk. How about another slam? Isaiah Briscoe up to Michael Motor this time. Cats up seven. They have not even played 10 minutes. How about three dunks? Bam slam. 12 points, eight rebounds for Bam out of bio. Now it's Briscoe driving. Misses the layup, but Sasha Kalea Jones getting on them the jam fest. 35-19 Cats. Now it's Briscoe with the steal. Goes for a typical layup, but gets fouled hard. It was called a flagrant foul. Bam's protecting his boy. All good. Nearing the end of the half now. Fox to Gabriel for the nice reverse layup there. Cats led 50-23 to at the break. Let's go second half. Fox to Monk. Back to Fox, and then Bam. That's smooth. He was five of eight from the field. And then how about this guy, though? Michael Mulder coming off the bench, scoring 13 points. His three ball always real good. As we go to the scoreboard, 93-59. Cats move to 4-0 in the season. Fox, Monk, Bam, and Mulder all in double figures. I like that we had post presence. We forced it the last couple days in practice. And we put in some things that would just make us throw the ball to the post. I thought Bam was outstanding. Um, you know, he's getting closer and closer. Um, uh, I thought Wenyon played really hard, um, you know, rebounding. And bowl eligible, finally. The football Cats will get to go to bowling or get to go bowling for the first time since 2010. Saturday night's win over Austin P gives the Cats their sixth win of the season. That does not mean they feel like they have nothing to play for Saturday at Louisville. Of course, they have something to play for. Obviously, a win over the Cards would put the Cats in a better bowl possibly, but there was a sense of alleviation after last after Saturday night's win. I'd say the best word to say is a lot of relief. You know, got six and you know, now we can go to this last week and have some fun and you know, try to see if we do something special. It's, it's a happy locker room. And, you know, I told the team that, you know, we talk about toughness and an attitude, uh, you know, every day and being resilient in, in uh, you know, this team has showed that and it wouldn't have happened without the great leadership of our seniors, and I'm very happy for them. Kentucky opens as a 24 and a half point underdog against Louisville. The Cats have lost five straight Governor's Cups. New kick time at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium Saturday with the game on ESPN. To the pros, Bengals have not won a game in almost a month. They were hosting the Bills. Second quarter, Bills up 10 to 6. Andy Dalton finds Tyler Boyd. Boyd's first career touchdown reception. Two missed extra points means it's 16 to 12 late in the fourth quarter. So a field goal would have won it if Mike Nugent could hit his extra points. But instead, the Bengals are throwing a Hail Mary. And Dalton, as you see, could not complete it. Cincinnati loses again. Now 3-6-1 on the year. All right, back to basketball for a moment. The two leading scores gone from the South Floyd girls basketball team. Both were seniors last year. And in tonight's EKU round ball preview, we check in with the Lady Raiders. A 12 and 13 season last year that ended in the first round of the 58th district tournament. Of course, this is the last go around for this school, so they want to make it special. Well, we talk about it all the time. I mean, we talk about it in practice. I mean, how we'd, lo we'd love to end the year with the district championship. I mean, that's been our goal ever since I started. But, I mean, more, more than that, I'd like to send these seniors home that have been with me from the beginning and gave me everything they had with a winning season and uh, just close the school out right, not, not go out as somebody looking at us as, you know, we were a losing program or something. It's, it's a really big deal because we need to go out with a bang. We've only had one district championship ever at South Floyd for the girls, and I really want to be a part of that. It's very important. Um, Making history, 
I'd like a championship. I think we can do it, but we have to work hard to do it. Just coming out and playing hard and getting a winning season under for the last South Floyd Lady Raiders basketball team and then just winning a district championship. It means a lot. Um, we haven't won a district championship since 2000, and so that's like our main goal this year because we want to prove ourselves for the last year. Let's go racing down to Homestead, Florida on Sunday. Jimmy Johnson wins his seventh NASCAR Sprint Cup championship that ties him for the most all time with Richard Petty and Dale Earnhardt. Johnson only led three laps in the race, but that's all he needed. Johnson, of course, beat out defending champion Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, and Carl Edwards, who were tied with him in the points coming into the race. So congrats to Jimmy Johnson. Starting at 4 o'clock uh, today, I guess we should say, we will begin to get you set for the Kentucky-Louisville game. And, of course, we'll have coverage all week long on the Governor's Cup. That's sports, and we'll be back.